I was there within six hours. It was absolutely clear that he wouldn't want the respirator continued. She went on hospice, and when she passed away, she was in my wife's arms. Couldn't have been a better way to go. I think the difference between a good death and a hard death is having had the conversation. You can't write an advance directive that covers every eventuality, but you can tell people what matters to you. Religion, race, ethnicity, class as well can influence what makes sense for patients. I think initiating the conversation with a loved one is as simple as diving right in and saying, we will not be living right now as we always will be. I want to make sure I do well by you and I need to know what's important to you. I used to tell my wife when I was 30 that as long as I had a smile on my face, do everything you have to do to keep me going. Now I sort of think of the impact that might have on my kids and my wife. For many people, it is quality of life versus quantity of life. Some people have very specific ideas about how they want to die, whether they want to be in their own home, whether they want the comfort of being in a hospital. To put up with having a breathing tube in an ICU for a couple of days, you're actually thinking out loud together about what makes life really, really good. As long as I can have that, it's really worth it to me. For many people, being at home is so comforting, but taking care of someone who's dying requires physical strength, it requires financial resources. And by the way, it isn't a one-time conversation. You can have it again and again, over time. We're all mortal. What do we want our life to be like right up to the very end? If you, as a loved one, could answer that question about your mother, father, spouse, partner, child, then it's so much easier to put the medical pieces together. Mm -hmm.